All right, boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Rat Ride Bible School of Rat Rideology. And a little shot where dreams come true. Okay, I got the four link set up, installed. I just got it all tacked together, but it, I mean, it works. I just do everything, I tack everything together to make sure everything's gonna work for it well and up solid. So I got a lot of welding to do. A lot of welding to do, but uh, when I get through with the fabricating on the frame, I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I'm weld it all up and start putting it back together one more time. And then when I get it all together that time, I got to complete it and I got to take it back apart again to paint it. So, yeah, but hey, take it apart is easy. That's, that's the easiest job there. I mean, it comes apart where I build stuff. I build it where it's easy to work on. It'll come apart real easy. Just a couple, two or three hours, I take the whole truck apart. But anyway, if you want to see some of what I got done there, as usual, stick around. Alright, been a couple days. Uh, Yeah, that rubber clean right off of there. You just gotta scrape it off. No problem. Just in case you're wondering, uh, what's all this about on this bottom link? This is an airbag. Airbag. Got the holes gonna sit on there. Right there, this bolt goes all the way through. To hold the airbag in place. This brace is to keep the pipe from bending for all the weight because it's going to be picking up the whole truck. So yeah, I mean this is going to be the rear end back here and this is going to be to the frame. So the airbag expands and picks the back of the truck up. That's what that's all about. Yeah, there's my tabs for the bottom two bottom two links. So what I've done, what I've done, I got that piece of two to three tacked in. Uh, the side tab will be coming somewhere right there, about right there. So I still got a couple inches. I the frame is at ride height right now, so I still got a couple, two or three inches that come, it can come up before the dry shaft hits there. So, yeah, I like to have a little more, but that's what we got, that's what we're going with. So what I've done, I centered everything up. I got the rear end square with that line across there. I got the frame dead center of this line. I got everything measured, same distance, level, and blah, 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 and I went ahead and tacked my ears on all, uh, for, for lower lengths, got all my ears tacked in. So yeah, and the airbag's gonna go there, and uh, yeah, the other arm, The other link is going to come across here. So I'm going to have get to be a pipe coming up from here for the air, top of the airbag, and this other link will be right beside it. Yeah, that's what we got so far. Now I've got to build the ears and get the top links mounted. That's going to be the part you really need to pay attention to because I'm going to show you how. 
with the top links, how to make sure you drive your rear end yoke is pointing straight at the drive shaft, straight at the back of the transmission. When you let it all the way down, and when you come all the way up, that rear end needs to, when you let it all the way down, the rear end needs to turn down a little bit. When you raise it all the way up, it needs to come up a little bit. Because you want this pointing straight at the tail end of the transmission at all times, all the way up and all the way down. So I'm going to show you how to make that happen. This top link is the key to making that work. Okay, guys. Uh, this is the most important part about setting up your rear end in a rat rod. If you're building, you, you're setting up your three link, I mean your four link, triangulated or parallel, whatever. You need to rear end pointing at the tail shaft of the transmission. So what I got here, I measured the transmission and it's five inches from there to the center of the shaft and it's 10 inches from there to the back of it. So, and then I have to add three inches because this, this here is up three inches from the center of the drive shaft. So eight inches, five, eight. So if I measure from here, I got like a seven, that's close enough for rat rods. So this is representing the drive shaft. So if this is sitting on top of this right there, I mean, it's, the rear end's pointing at the tail shaft of the transmission, which is what we want. So I got it slammed, the frame slammed all the way down the ground. So with the rear end exactly like it is, the drive shaft will be pointing at the tail shaft like it's supposed to with the, rear, with the frame slammed to the ground. And this is the really weird part. I mean, this is a rat rod. This is really, Highly classified rat rod scientific calculations. I'll be showing you right here. Okay, so what we got here, we got the bottom four links on and we got the back part of the top length. So what we need to do is determine where the front part of this link needs to be. And determining if it's up up there or down here. But uh, if you put it in the wrong place, the rear end won't be pointing at the tail shaft. So you got to have that right. So what I got, I got a piece of cardboard. I got it clamped onto the frame right there so it'll stay in place. I got me a felt marker. I got the frame slammed all the way to the ground. I'm going to take this felt marker. I'm going to stick it through there where the bolt goes. And I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to run this up. So, I got me a mark right there with the frame all the way down. Now, I'm going to jack the frame all the way up and do the same thing. Okay, so, needless to say, when you're all the way down, you need to make sure your rear end is lined up with your mark straight middle you need to make sure your frame is centered your rear end is centered your rear end is right this way with your mark on the floor and all that good stuff and when it's all the way down your rear end is pointing at the tail shaft or transmission so now i got the frame jacked all the way up as high as it's going to ever go maybe a little higher than it ever go i got my rear end Double check the rear end every time I move this frame, I double check it. The rear end is centered. The frame is centered. The, the rear end is straight this way. Everything is lined up. I got the rear end pinion shaft point straight at the back of the transmission. So now what I'm going to do, same thing I've done before. I'm going to take this. Stick it through this bolt hole. And I'm gonna put me another mark right there. So I don't know if you know what that means or not, but 
I'm gonna tell you what it means. That means that this, where these two lines cross, is where this needs to be. I don't want it down there. I don't want it up here. I want it right there where them two lines cross. That way, when the frame goes all the way down, it'll be the rear end be pointing at the transmission. When it's all the way up, the rear end be pointing at the transmission. And when I get this, uh, the ears made, get this end of the link hooked up and all, I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys, I'll jack it up now, I'll show you guys how it works, what I'm talking about. But that's how you find out where you need that. Is with, just like that. <laughs> yeah, that's rat rod ball, school of rat rodology right there, buddy. Okay, I had to make a couple changes and redo this, but still the same concept. This is my new mark right here, which is basically the same. So what I do to measure up from the floor is 20 inches. And then I can take this off. And I need 20 inches. So I got me a mark on my frame, 20 inches. So this is where that this is where that needs to go. And it's gonna be the same on the other side too. So I get this eye lined up with that 20 inch mark. It should uh, we should be fine. So I'll make a tab. I'll make a uh, an eye. For this side, bolt it up, and one on that side, same thing, and we're going and we're gonna see jack it up now, see what happens with the rear end. Alright guys, here we go. Remember, X mark spot. Now, this is representing the drive shaft. Well, it represents above the drive shaft, but it'll just give you an idea of what's happening there. Right now, I've got to, got to jack it all the way up. I'm gonna let it down. You see that bit turned down, points to the, rear, points to the back of the transmission, or I jack it up. It comes up the point to the back of the transmission like it's supposed to. Alright, watch well, close. It's all the way up. We'll go down real slow. That's what you want. You want that pinion to be pointing at the back end of that transmission. You want the pinion to point to the tail shaft of the transmission all the time when you go up and down. So, Especially when you build one that the slant goes up and down a lot like this one, you want to you gotta pay close attention to that. So you see the drive shaft pointing the transmission. So, still pointing back in the transmission like it's supposed to, so, that. Now, I'm gonna try my best to explain to you the difference between a triangulated four link and a parallel four link. All right, for one triangulated four link, see, I could jack up one side at the rear end no problem. Don't put anything in a bind. Works like it's supposed to. That's what you want. Now, 
If this was a parallel four length, you got to, I mean, you got to really think about this. And if you don't already know, if you got two two lengths coming straight out here, and you jack up one side, those lengths are going to go like that. It's going to cause the rear end to twist, which in turn is going to make the other side come up too. So the only thing to keep the other side from not coming up is, is these, if you got bushings, these bushings would be given a little bit, you'd be putting strain on these bushings. So a parallel four length is for a rear end that goes up and down. They don't do this. You don't want a parallel link on anything that does this. If you're gonna be going off-road or going through ditches, you want to triangulate the four lengths so you rarely have to do this without being in a bind. Now, if you got a parallel four length with bushings, it will do that a little bit, but it'd be every, every time it does that, it's putting a bind on the bushings and everything. Now the Demon Falcon has got a parallel four length that's got Heinz joints on the end, it don't have no slack in them. So if I was to do the same thing to it, block the frame up and jack up one side of it, the other side will come up with it. It don't do this at all. It won't, I mean, it's up and down only, it don't do this. So. If you're thinking the difference between a triangulated four length and a parallel four length, it's a pan hard bar. Well, that's just a small thing different about them. That's a, yeah, you don't need a pan hard bar or a triangulated four length. But the, the main difference is, is you can rear end or articulate more than it will with a parallel four leg. So I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm getting through to you guys on that or not, but I see people I see guys on YouTube taking the, the pickup truck that they're gonna use for daily driving and all that and they're putting parallel four link on it and I said man <laughs> that ain't right <laughs> especially one guy is putting parallel four link and he's got a link way down there and the other one way up here. I mean it ain't no way even with the bushings, that rear end's gonna do that. I mean, he's gonna, he's gonna if, if he goes through any rough terrain and all, he's putting all that suspension in a real big bind there. So, if you want a regular the other driver that's gonna be doing this, you need to try and let it pour lane, is what I'm trying to tell you. Pan hard bar, don't we really worry about that. I, ain't, I mean, that's, yeah, that's fine, but a pan hard bar ain't that hard to put on. But, you don't need a pan hard bar with triangulated four length. You do with a parallel four length. But the parallel four length don't want to do this. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So I don't know if I I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to tell you or not, but you just you just seen that the triangulated will do this with no problem, just the way it is, the way it's set up, no problem. And X marks the spot, so if you set that up top arm, but like I said. Your, your drive shaft will always be pointing at, your, at the tail shaft and rear end. So I hope I'm getting through to you guys. <laughs> Just in case you guys want to get a little closer look. Yeah, it ain't perfect. <laughs> 
the rat ride style. But uh, I tell you what, I guarantee you one thing, it'll work. It's going to work fine. Probably work better and last longer than the car you're driving down the road now. All right, guys, gals. Uh, I guess the next thing I got to put get the airbags and get the top. I got to get that working. So that's going to be the next video is getting the airbags set up for the back. And uh, hope if everything goes good in that one video, I can do that. I can put some air to it so you see the back end go up and down. That's, we don't see the front end go up and down. We want to see the back end go up and down now. And then uh, hopefully in the near future we see the whole truck go up and down and go down the road. So I don't know about where you at, but here it done went straight from winter time to summertime. And uh, I'm hot and tired. I've been working all day on this thing. But actually, the last couple of days I've been getting it pretty good because uh, it takes me a long time to get stuff done. But anyway. I'm taking the rest of the day off the pay. Simple as that. We getting it. We just ain't got it yet. Appreciate you. See you next time.